in the previous lecture we have discussed in very detail the nearly free electron model or nearly free electron method or nearly free electron approximation now today uh, in this lecture we are going to see the first part of a very important approximate method for formation of band in solids and that is actually called tight binding approximation or tight binding method or you can say the tight binding approach for the formation of bands in solids okay in fact uh, this is a very a uh, vast and somewhat complicated uh, <coughs> lecture and so i have divided this lecture in two parts actually in this very first part of the lecture on tight binding approximation we will see only the qualitative explanation we will not make any calculation but we will see only the arguments only the qualitative approach for the formation of band in solids by using this tight binding approximation okay in fact this uh, method which is called tight binding approximation or tight binding uh, method or approach for formation of bands in solids was devised or proposed first of all by bloch and this method is also known as linear combination of atomic orbitals in brief in short or in uh, as an abbreviation you can say this is called lcao why it is called a linear combination of atomic orbitals we will see it later on when we will explain this tight binding approximation qualitative a, a, a manner then you will see why it is called linear combination of atomic orbitals because here you will see actually that uh, when the two or more atoms come closer and form the solid then there is simply a combination of atomic energy levels or atomic orbitals and a band is formed and that's why this method is also called linear combination of atomic orbitals okay in fact this tight binding approximation is valid only for the inner or core electrons of most of the solids like uh, insulators uh, like uh, semiconductors okay not for the valence electron okay since uh, all solids with periodic potentials have allowed and forbidden energy regions as you have learnt in the previous lectures so that the tight banding approximation gives a band structure in the energy and how these energy bands are formed we will see uh, in a qualitative manner in this first part of the lecture on this tight banding approximation okay so i have written here you can say this is just a qualitative approach in the second part of the lecture we will see the quantitative approach which is also called uh, the mathematical method or the analytical method to explain this tight binding approximation okay actually uh, if you are, your aim is to understand how the energy bands are formed in a solid by this tight binding method then let us first of all consider uh, with neutral separated atoms for example we consider the hydrogen atom which is actually the simplest atom containing one electron and one proton okay and first of all we consider that these atoms are far separated from one another as i am showing here in this figure these dots actually represent the different neutral hydrogen atoms and all the atoms we consider are in its ground state you know if uh, the hydrogen atoms are in its ground state 
then its uh, electronic configuration will be 1s1 okay it means uh, the atom is in its uh, s state and if you are considering that this is in 1s st state this is called its ground state that is the minimum energy state and uh, we consider that uh, initially the atoms are far separated that is separation between any two atoms is such that the wave function associated with the atoms do not overlap one another as you can see for simplicity i have considered here only two atoms to understand the fact so this is <coughs> one of your atoms this small sphere represents the first atom uh, let us consider this is your first atom and this is the second atom okay and both are far separated and this psi a is the wave function of the first atom and psi b is the wave function of the second atom or you can also say that this is uh, psi this psi a and psi b are the wave functions of the wave packet associated with these atoms in isolated state okay here the atoms 1 and 2 are isolated from each other and so the wave functions psi a and psi b do not uh, overlap as you can see in this figure I, in other words you can also say that the wave functions or the wave packets associated with these isolated atoms are uncorrelated they are not correlated to one another or in other words you can also say that the wave functions uh, do not uh, overlap with each other in this condition actually when the atoms are as far separated and the wave functions do not overlap with one another then these atoms have identical energy levels okay identical energy levels and uh, <coughs> the first atom has one energy level this one uh, s one electron is found in this energy level and this is the energy level of the second atom okay and both have a uh, similar or identical energy level okay but now uh, let us consider that uh, the two atoms are brought uh, closer to one another and uh, when the two atoms will uh, come closer then you should watch the changes in the atomic uh, levels atomic energy levels as the charge distribution of uh, adjacent atoms overlap when the atoms are brought together to form a crystal okay so uh, if the two atoms are brought closer there will be an overlapping of the atomic orbitals or you can say the wave functions or wave packets of the two atoms and due to this overlapping of functions uh, what will be the resultant wave function of the two uh, atoms now you can see in fact uh, when the there is a overlapping of the wave function then there are two possibilities okay in the first possibility the resultant wave function if you call it psi that will be equal to psi a plus psi b okay and the another possibility is psi equal to psi a minus psi b so in fact as the atoms are brought together their wave functions overlap and we consider the two combinations psi a plus psi b and psi a minus psi b okay in fact each combination shares an electron with two protons or two nuclei you can say the at atom the electron of the first atom or the electron of the second atom they are actually they found themselves actually in the field of the two nuclei or two protons of the two atoms okay but the electron uh, which is in this state psi a plus psi b okay 
see uh, here this uh, overlapping uh, which produces the resultant wave function psi a plus psi b in this first figure you can see that in this uh, state the electron has somewhat a smaller energy okay uh, that is you can say that electron in the state psi a plus psi b will have somewhat lower energy than the state psi a minus psi b. But uh, how you can say that uh, in this state psi a plus psi b the electron has uh, less energy than the state psi a minus psi b. We can explain it. Okay. So I have written here that why e psi a plus psi b is less than e psi a minus psi b. Here e psi a plus psi b means energy of the electron in the state psi a plus psi b and uh, e psi a minus psi b means this is energy of the electron in the state psi a minus psi b. Actually you can see uh, from this figure that when this combination occurs that is the resultant wave function is psi a plus psi b then in the mid way this is the mid way you can see here here this wave function psi a plus psi b has a finite value it is not zero okay you can see this curve passage over this line uh, on which uh, this electron is lying okay and so uh, psi a plus psi b in this condition has a finite value and so the mod of psi square which is equal to mod of psi a plus psi b square this is not zero it has a finite value and you know from quantum mechanics uh, from the Heisenberg <coughs> Um, uh, sorry, it's from the Max Bohr's uh, interpretation of uh, function that this modulus of psi square represents the probability density of finding uh, of a particle in a particular region. So uh, the there is a finite probability of electron finding in this uh, energy state. Okay, it is not zero. And that's why you can say that in this uh, uh, state psi a plus psi b the electron spends part of the time in the region midway between the two protons or the two nuclei. Okay? And so in this region uh, there will be an attractive potential of the two protons at the same time. Uh, under which your electron is uh, under which the electron found itself and due to this attractive potential of the two protons there will be an increase uh, there thereby increasing the binding energy okay and so that due to this increase in binding energy means what the energy will become more and more negative and so that the energy of this uh, electron in this state is somewhat smaller. But uh, let us now see uh, the combination psi a minus psi b. In this condition you can see that uh, the wave function psi becomes zero. Psi a is equal to zero uh, in the mid way between the two protons and if psi is equal to 0 that means uh, ki psi a minus psi b becomes 0 in the mid way of the two protons and so the probability density also vanishes okay in the mid way and uh, as the probability density in the mid way vanishes uh, between the two nuclei an extra binding energy does not appear and this is the reason that the energy of the electron in the state psi a plus psi b is somewhat smaller or lesser than that of the state psi a minus psi b okay so in this way you can see 
uh, that <clears throat> as the two atoms are brought together the two separated energy levels or uh, you can say the two separated energy levels uh, are formed and for each level of the isolated atom okay so in fact uh, in case of isolated atoms you have seen this is the energy level of our first atom this is the energy level of our second atom okay but when there is an overlapping of wave function when the two atoms are very close then actually in this condition there will be two energy levels for this single electron a single atom uh, which has only one energy level this one energy level is now splitted into two energy levels and what are those energy levels the first energy level will be for the combination psi a plus psi b and the second energy level will be for the combination psi a minus psi b so in this way you can see that uh, uh, in uncorrelated state when the atoms were not very close then there was only one energy level let us say this is your, the energy level of the atom uh, in the case when they are the, the two atoms were not uh, the wave function of the two atoms were not overlapped but now after overlapping this single energy level is split into two energy levels because why two energy levels because you know this is this lower line actually represents the energy level of the combination psi a plus psi b and this upper line represents the energy levels level of the combination psi a minus psi b because the energy of these two combinations is different okay so <clears throat> in this way we say that uh, as the two atoms are brought together the two separated energy levels are formed for each level of the isolated atom okay so if uh, you consider now there is a third atom it means we are considering now this a system of three atoms and all the three atoms get overlapped then a single energy level or a single uh, orbital of uh, an isolated atom will be splitted now in three energy levels so in general you can say that if there are n atoms there are n atoms then what will happen if you consider that uh, there are n atoms let us say this is your n atoms okay and these atoms have a single energy level let us say in for each atom let us consider this first atom and this is the energy level of your first atom but there are n atoms and all these n atoms have uh, the wave function of all these n atoms have been overlapped in that condition this single energy level is split into n energy levels these are the energy levels uh, when the atoms get closer and closer and their wave functions get overlapped but you know all these energy levels are very close to one another and so effectively they are uh, form a band so in this way you can say for n atoms n orbitals or n energy levels will be formed for each orbital or each energy level of the isolated atom okay and uh, these levels are actually very closely spaced and spread out into what is known as energy band actually in this figure you can say see that i have shown a free atom and uh, the 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 <coughs> graph between energy in a redberg unit and nearest neighbor separation in uh, bohr radii in against of this nearest neighbor distance in bohr radii has been shown and this is actually the this horizontal line actually represents the energy level of a free atom okay 
but uh, when there will be an overlapping of n atoms then this energy level is splitted into the different closely packed energy levels which i have shown in this figure so these are the splitted energy levels as you can see okay and in this manner a, an energy bandage form so how the energy bandage form you can see easily that when the atoms of a solid are far separated their wave functions are uncorrelated they do not overlap and each ha atom has a one energy level okay but when the atoms are closed so that the wave functions of the atoms get overlap then if there are two atoms one energy level of an isolated atom will be splitted into two if uh, there are two atoms a single energy level will be splitted into two energy levels if there are three atoms a single energy level of an isolated atom will be splitted into three energy levels and in similar manner if there are n atoms then this single energy level will be splitted into n energy levels and since these energy levels are close very close to one another a spacing be between them is very small so actually an energy band is formed so how this energy band is formed uh, you can see and so in case of uh, when the a large number of atoms uh, combine together and form a solid then there is no a, a discrete energy levels inside the solid but there will be energy bands okay so when the atoms are far separated then the atomic energy levels are actually the <coughs> discrete but when the atoms come close together and form a solid then there will be an splitting of each energy level of an isolated atoms and uh, and the splitted energy levels are so close to one another the separation between them is so uh, small that they form the energy band so i think we have def definitely understand how this energy band is formed actually as uh, free atoms are brought together the coulomb interaction between the atom cores and the electron splits the energy level why there is an splitting of energy level you can see actually the coulombian interaction between the atom cores and the electron is responsible for the splitting of the en atomic energy levels into the energy band okay in fact each state of given quantum number of the free atom is spread into uh, spread in the crystal into a band of energies and the width of the band is proportional to the strength of the overlap interaction between the neighboring atoms so what will be actually the width of the energy band that depends on the strength of overlap interaction in fact uh, as there is much and much overlapping there will be larger bandwidth okay so if uh, the two atoms are brought uh, near to one another and there is a, a strong overlapping then the bandwidth will be larger but if uh, the overlapping is not uh, very effective then the bandwidth is not very large okay so uh, actually <coughs> it is seen that the width of the band is proportional to the strength of overlap interaction between the neighboring atoms okay in fact uh, there will be also bands formed from uh, the other orbitals that is for the excited states of the atoms you can say here in our discussion we have considered only the one uh, s state which was ground state but there will be uh, bands formed from uh, the p orbitals from the d orbitals 
from the f orbitals ok. Actually you know for this uh, p orbital the orbital quantum number is 1 for this d orbital quantum number is 2 and for this f orbital quantum number is equal to 3 ok. So, uh, <coughs> you, you, it is seen that bands are also formed from this p, d, f and so on orbitals of free atoms. But uh, states degenerate in the free atom will form different bands. Each will not have the same energy as uh, any other band over any substantial range of the wave vector bands may coincide in energy in certain values of the wave vector k okay in the brillouin zone in fact uh, this approximation you have seen which uh, starts out from the wave function of the free atoms is also known as the tight binding approximation or it is also called the linear combination of atomic orbitals LCAO approximation ok. In fact, uh, the approximation uh, which I have uh, told you earlier is quite good for the inner electrons of atoms, but it is not often good uh, description of the conduction electrons themselves. So, this method is valid for the core electrons not for the valence electrons ok. And uh, it is used to describe uh, <coughs> approximately the D bands of the transition metals and the valence bands of the diamond like and inert gas crystals. Okay? For this, uh, uh, for these uh, materials, this approximation can be used. Okay? So, this is all about the qualitative approach for the tight bending approximation and I think you have definitely understand how this energy band is formed in the solid uh, <coughs> due to this tight binding approximation method or by the LCAO method uh, and uh, the key point is only that that when the atoms get closer the wave functions of the isolated atoms get overlapped and uh, due to that overlapping of atomic orbitals or wave functions it is seen that the each energy level of an isolated atoms atom is splitted into the energy levels whose number is same as that of the number of atoms combining together. So, if there are n atoms then uh, when the all the n atoms will be closed each energy level of an isolated atom will be splitted into n energy levels and those n energy levels are since uh, very close to one another. So, n energy levels now form an energy band. Okay? So, in this way in a solid there is no discrete energy levels but uh, electrons are found in energy bands. Okay? So, in this way we have understand this uh, band formation in solids by this tight binding approximation. Now, as I have told you we will see in the next lecture this quantitative approach. This quantitative approach how we can set up the Schrodinger equation for the electron and how that equation will be solved and how energy band is formed. All these things we will learn in our second lecture. So, in this first part of the lecture on tight binding approximation, I have introduced you only the qualitative approach for formation of energy bands in solids. Okay? Thank you very much.